Hi, I'm Evan, but everyone at school calls me Sticky Pants, and I'm about to tell you why. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. Everyone in my family was military. My great-grandfather, grandfather, and father were all soldiers. However, I was more interested in science and technologies. Not to brag, but I was a pretty smart guy, and I had always dreamed of becoming a programmer. Of course, my dad didn't like that. He wanted me to join the army like him. We often fought because of it. You should use the dumbbells instead of the computer. I don't approve of your choice. I didn't approve of your choice either, but you married Nicole anyway. Nicole was my stepmother. She was spoiled and lazy and spent all our money on herself. She also disliked me and never even tried to hide it. One day, I asked dad to buy me a new monitor, but Nicole said she needed that money for shopping. That money isn't for you, Evan. I found an amazing dress on sale. Why can't you buy some brains? Watch your tongue, brat. I couldn't stand that arrogant snake. But the saddest thing was that I fell head over heels in love with a girl just as insufferable. Chloe Foy was the girl of my dreams and nightmares. It was her fault people started to call me Sticky Pants. Her dad was an important businessman. In junior mm -hmm. high, Chloe was very kind and we got along great. However, I was a shy nerd, so I never told her about my feelings. Then one day, something happened to her. It was like Chloe had been replaced. She became rude and arrogant, fell in with bad company and turned into a real jerk. Meanwhile, I didn't change at all and was still in love with Chloe. One day, I plucked up the courage, bought Chloe's favorite sweets and told her I had liked her for a long time. Do you know what she did? Made fun of me in front of the whole school. I'm way out of your league, you clown. Give me the candy and scram. I was devastated, but that wasn't the end of it. Chloe put those candies on my chair. I didn't notice anything and sat down on them. The sweets melted and some pieces of paper stuck to them. I realized what had happened only when everyone started laughing and pointing at me. <laughs> Guys, make way! Sticky pants is coming through! <laughs> I decided not to give up. I swore to myself I'd get into a good college, become rich and successful, and impress Chloe. However, my dad soon fell off the roof while repairing it and injured his back. That threw a wrench in the works. He could no longer serve in the army and was sent to the reserve. Of course, dad got decent money for his service, but it was all spent on doctors and his rehabilitation. Nicole spent everything that was left on herself. Look at these diamond earrings I got. How are we going to buy food and pay the bills? I was in for more terrible news. It turned out my dad and stepmother decided to use my college money. You will need them since you're going to join the army anyway. Nope, not for the world. I decided I would pay my own tuition and got a part-time job as an animator in a children's cafe. I was paid to wear an Iron Man costume and play with the kids. The money was good, and besides, it was fun. For some reason, the children adored me. The only thing I was afraid of was that one of my classmates would find out about it and make fun of me. Again. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. I was playing with the kids when one of them threw up on me. I took off the suit to clean it. As luck would have it, Chloe was walking by the cafe with her friends at that very moment! Damn it! My classmates saw me and burst out laughing. <laughs> Look, it's Mr. Sticky Pants! A clown costume would suit you better, haha! <laughs> Please kill me now. Then hmm? Chloe came up to me and offered me a napkin. Don't listen to them, Evan. I didn't know you were so good with kids. I think it's cute. She smiled sheepishly and she said she loved Iron Man. Come to my party tonight, and don't forget your awesome costume. What was up with Chloe? She kept blowing hot and cold. What a mysterious mm. girl. That evening, I dressed up and went to her party. The house was full of people. Chloe coquettishly took my hand and led me somewhere. I was hoping it was oh. a date. However, mm. Chloe brought me to a children's room. A little girl was playing there. What's going on? This cute monster is my little sister Zoe. Can you watch over her while I'm hanging out with my friends? What the heck? Was that why she'd invited me? To be a babysitter? That hurt. I turned around and was about to leave, but Chloe looked at me with plaintive eyes. Please, Evan. My parents left and asked me to look after Zoe, but we can't stand each other, and you're great with kids. She even handed me some money. It was a little humiliating, but I agreed to stay. After all, college wasn't going to pay for itself. Chloe left a party, and I started playing with Zoe. The little girl was quite a pain. She kept trying to escape from the room, screeching and throwing toys. Why don't you sit still, and I'll read you a fairy tale? Nope, you will be my horse. She jumped on my neck and made me carry her around the room. 
Then she said she wanted to play a beauty salon, painted my nails and did my hair. Felt like I was about to lose it. Luckily, she soon got tired and fell asleep on the floor. Ugh, where does she get all that energy? I put her to bed and suddenly heard a noise in the living room. It turned out that Chloe's parents had suddenly come back and started yelling at her. How can you be so irresponsible? Explain yourself! I told the guests to get out and then burst into Zoe's room. Needless to say, he was shocked when he saw me there. However, he was even more surprised when he found out I managed to calm Zoe down enough to sleep. It turned out she drove all her previous babysitters to tears, and they fled in terror. You seem like a smart guy, Evan. Would you mind sometimes babysitting Zoe? Mr. Foy offered me more money than I was being paid as an animator, so I agreed. Besides, working at their house meant I could get closer to Chloe. I started to spend a lot of time in their house. Watching over Zoe wasn't easy. She would often try to crawl into the refrigerator to eat her older sister's lipstick. However, it was Chloe's behavior that worried me. She was as rude at home as she was at school and clearly didn't like Zoe. Chloe, let's hug! Don't touch me with your sticky hands. Stop it, she's just a child. You don't know anything, Evan. Mind your own business. Whoa, I got goosebumps when she glared at me like that. When I came home, I often got scolded by my dad. He didn't approve of what I was doing. Babysitting is a woman's job. You are a disgrace to our military dynasty. Dad, I'm just saving up money for college. Nothing will make me give up on my dream of becoming a programmer. One day, Chloe's parents asked me to watch over Zoe and left again. The weather was great, so I arranged a picnic in the yard. I don't want any fruit, they're nasty. Give me ice cream. She threw her apple aside. As I was picking it up, I heard someone crying. It was Chloe. She was sitting on a bench and sobbing quietly. She looked so vulnerable and lonely. I decided to find out what happened. But first, I asked Zoe to sit tight for five minutes. I'll come back and buy you ice cream, okay? Okay, my hero! I came up to Chloe and handed her a handkerchief. Are you okay? No, everything's ruined and it's been for a while, Evan. She told me that she felt like her dad stopped loving her after he married Zoe's mom. Wow. It turned out Chloe wasn't related to Zoe and lived with her stepmother. Zoe gets all the attention, even though she has her own father. He's just in prison. So that's why Chloe had changed so suddenly. She was just jealous of her sister. I told her that I lived with my stepmother too. We started chatting and lost track of time. And then I remembered I'd left Zoe alone. Oh no! We immediately rushed to the picnic spot, but she wasn't there. I was such a moron! Chloe and I started running around the park looking for Zoe. Luckily, we quickly found her. She was sitting on a swing and eating ice cream. You really scared us. Don't run away like that again. An ice cream vendor gave me this. Do you want to take a bite? I realized that things could have ended much worse. I sternly told Zoe to never talk to strangers or take anything they gave her. After that, I decided to do something so that she would not get lost again. I took her favorite teddy bear and sewed my smartwatch into it. There was a tracker in it that I could use to find her. Here's your teddy bear. Never part with him, okay? I promise, Mr. Babysitter. Ever since then, <laughs> Chloe started to treat her sister better. She even apologized to me for the candy incident. You're a good guy. Can we start over? And we did. We went on dates and did everything together, like a real couple. I felt like a million bucks. One day, I was walking her home after we went to the movies. We said goodbye, and I was about to leave when I saw Chloe's father. Mr. Foy was about to throw away his mm. smartwatch. I could see that it was broken. What a shame. I paid a lot of money for it. I said I could try to fix his watch. As I worked, we got to talking. Mr. Foy told me he loved Chloe, but was tired of her acting so jealous of her sister. I have to pay more attention to Zoe because of how young and energetic she is. Besides, her real father is a criminal. He is forbidden from approaching his daughter, but he wants to take her away from her mother. So we need to keep a close eye on Zoe. I was done with the watch and handed it to Chloe's father. Mr. Foy was so impressed that he offered me a job as an intern in his IT company. I would be honored, sir. I soon started to earn good money and even bought a good car. At school, I was no longer a laughing stock. Sticky Pants became the guy all the girls wanted to date. But I didn't care about anyone but my Chloe. Things were looking up. One day soon, Mr. Foy even entrusted me with an important project. Be careful, our competitors can't find out about it. I won't let you down. That weekend, I was invited to their family dinner. Zoe ran up to me and whispered in my ear that she had seen the ice cream vendor through the window at night. Wait, what? That was weird. I was about to ask her to tell me more about it, but Mr. Foy was making a toast. 
I'm grateful to be among the people dear to me tonight. Evan, you are like a son to me. I am proud of your success. I'd like you to inherit my company. It was really freaking nice to hear that. However, Chloe got mad and pushed her plate away. I knew that none of you cared about me! With those words, she ran to her room in tears. I tried to talk to her, but Chloe told me to go away. Damn it. A few days after that, I got a call from Mr. Foy when I was at school. He was shouting so loudly I could barely understand him. I trusted you, Evan! How could you do that? You're fired! Stay away from my family! I asked him what he meant, but Mr. Foy hung up. What in the world? I heard someone behind me chuckle. It was Chloe. Surprise, baby. I framed you and handed over the data of Dad's company to his competitors. What? Wh wh why did you do that? Take a wild guess. You knew how much I missed Dad, but still spent more time with him than I did. Her words made my blood boil. I'd always been kind to everyone and didn't deserve being treated that way. So I told Chloe that we were done. I wouldn't let her walk all over me. I didn't speak to anyone for a few days because I felt like a rotten tomato. I even thought about giving up and joining the military just like Dad wanted me to. But then one evening, Chloe suddenly called me, freaking out. Heaven, I need your help! She said that her parents had left and asked her to watch over Zoe for a couple of days. I'm not going to babysit her again. You don't get it! Zoe has disappeared from her room! I don't know what to do! What? Okay, d don't panic, I'll be there soon. I ran to Chloe's place and the two of us searched the whole house. Zoe seemed to have vanished into thin air. Then I found drawings in her room. She had drawn the ice cream vendor. And then I remembered sewing my smartwatch into Zoe's toy. I downloaded an app on my phone and tracked her. Zoe was moving down a highway at a very high speed. We called the police and gave them all the information we had. What happened next could have been the plot of a blockbuster. It turned out that Zoe's real father had been watching her for a long time, pretending to be a harmless ice cream seller. That scoundrel waited for a chance to snatch his daughter away. However, the cops quickly caught up to his car. The criminal was sent to jail, and we got Zoe back. Chloe and I were so relieved that we immediately threw our arms around Zoe, who was acting like she'd gone on a fun adventure. Why are you so upset? It was fun! You were very brave, but never open the window to strangers again! I'm sorry I was such a bad big sister! I will always be there for you from now on! Their parents came home as soon as they found out about what happened. Chloe talked to her father, and they reconciled. She confessed she had framed me out of jealousy, and Mr. Foy apologized for firing me. You're a talented young man, Evan, and you have a bright future ahead of you. Thank you for helping my girls. Do you want to keep working for me? He liked my idea of making toys with a built-in tracker and suggested I develop my own project. Of course, I agreed. After all, it would be a great start for my career. I've forgiven Chloe, and now we're fine. We often go on walks with Zoe. <laughs> Give me a ride, my dear horse! The best thing was that my father finally acknowledged my efforts. Son, I shouldn't have tried to change you. I'm proud of you. Keep following your dream. Nicole is still my evil stepmother, though but it doesn't bother me anymore. After all, I have people in my life who support and accept me.